Today's type of problem is an ice problem. These types of problems help you find out what exactly is your concentration of different elements in a, in a reaction. So today we have our reaction. Let me write this down. H2 plus F2 turns into 2HF. All right. See, I'm reading this off of my review guide. <laughs> and also given is that the KEQ equals 1.5 times 10 squared. And HF has an initial concentration of 3 moles. Now that's, that's the, all right, so when you have... A problem and when it's given those are the two things you're looking for you're looking for that you have a, an equation given but if the equation if they give you what is being turned into what for example if the equation just told you hydrogen and fluorine turns into hydrofluoric acid then you'd have to rewrite the entire equation but that's the first thing so you need an equation you need KEQ or KSP given. And you need the concentration of everything on one side, on one of the starting sides. I'm going to switch that because this brings up an important point. In this equation, normally when you look left to right, you'd say, oh, well, we're not given any of the reactants, so it just sticks to all HF. But the thing is, there's, this is a reversible reaction. So you can have some hydrofluoric acid turn into hydrogen and fluor fluorine. So to set up your ice problem, first of all, you do ice, I, C, E. And then you make sure you have enough for each one. This will be H2, this will be F2, and this will be HF. So initially you start out with zero hydrogen, zero fluorine, and three moles of hydrofluoric acid. And next part is the important part, the change. So for H2, you're obviously losing, gaining, I, I apologize, you're gaining because you have nothing, so you can't lose anything. That's, a, that's, that's what I was going for, I was talking too quickly. So you can't lose anything, so the only thing to do is to gain. And then you look at the coefficient. When there's no coefficient, assume it's a one. Plus one times, and you don't know the exact change in moles, so you just use x. Same with F2, positive because it's on the product side, 1 because its coefficient is 1, and x because you don't know the exact amount. And then hydrofluoric acid minus because it's a reactant, 2 because that's the coefficient, and x because that's just how many moles it's going to lose. So the, what the E stands for is the ending. So here, H2 ends with X more than it started out with. F2 ends with X. HF ends with 3 minus 2X. You just add up the two rows from the above columns. And then you plug it into your KEQ equation, which in this reaction would look like H2 F2 over HF squared. So that turns into 1.5 times 10 squared, because that's our original KEQ, equals X times X over 3 minus 2X squared. So then I'm going to rewrite this up here. 150. 150 equals x squared over 
3 minus 2x squared. Then you can square root, so then you get square root of 150 equals x over 3 minus 2x. And then you can cross multiply. x equals uh, 3 minus 2x times root 150. And then you can distribute it out. x equals 3 root 150 minus 2x root 150. And then you move it all to respective sides. So 3 root 150 equals x minus 2x root 150. 3 root 150 equals, don't worry, just bear with me, x times 1 minus 2 root 150 divided by 1 minus 2 root 150. So that means that x equals a number that I'm about to plug into my calculator. Just bear with me, provided I can find it. And you end up getting that x equals approximately 1.43. Don't worry. See, the thing is, I have an answer key, so I can look at it, and I don't really need a calculator. So what this tells you is it's the change in moles. So when you have this 1.43, you go back to H2 has x moles at equilibrium. F2 also has x moles at equilibrium. And HF has 3 minus 2x moles at equilibrium. So this tells you that at equilibrium, H hydrogen has 1.43 moles and in this situation we're assuming it's in a 1 liter container so it's 1.3 molar 1.43 molar same with F2 and HF has because it's 3 minus 2x so it's 3 minus 2.86 that's approximately 0 0.14 molar and that's that's how you do an ice problem so what it is is when you are given I'm just going to move this down a bit you are given a, an equation you might have to balance it yourself don't forget diatomics you're given the KEQ and you're given the concentrations of all of the reactants so that's how to do ice problems. And I think I'll crank out more because my test is tomorrow. And if anyone here is in my class, you know, I'm kind of scared about this test. All right. So this is Ordlory X signing off.